guys, it's Cammie. Welcome back to my channel. You may notice something a little different about me, aka the 18 inches of hair that are now added on top of my head. I figured we needed to address that or all the comments were just gonna be about my hair. Now that we got that out of the way, I went to the CVS Epic Beauty event today and I picked up some of my all-time favorite products and then loads and loads of new things that I've just been dying to try. So I'm gonna go through all of them with you here today, show you the new stuff that I got and my thoughts on it, share all of my favorite products that a lot of them are actually dupes for more expensive products, and just do somewhat of a hands-on type of haul. The CVS Epic Beauty event starts on February 17th and runs until March 16th, where you can earn over $100 in extra bucks rewards on all beauty, and you can also snag daily deals on CVS.com until March 2nd. But if you're a beauty club member like me, you can earn an extra 10% rewards, and you're also gonna get early access starting on February 10th. So after this video, don't forget to head over to CVS.com to sign up as a beauty club member. Before I show you any of the products, I just wanted to say that everything I'm using here today is vegan and cruelty free. I double, triple, quadruple checked, so if I'm wrong, please let me know and I'll be sure to correct that. I just wanted to take all the guesswork out of it for you guys because I know it can be so confusing when you're trying to shop and figure out what is and isn't safe for you to use. A couple of the products I'm actually going to be trying out tonight and I'll insert a clip in a second of me going over it and doing their full review. One of which is a physician's formula, the perfect matcha three-in-one melting cleansing balm. I love cleansing balms and oils so much. I just think that they break down any dirt, oil, and makeup so much better than typical cleansers for me. And it also really moisturizes and hydrates my skin, which I have a problem with dry skin, so it's great. The other thing I am so absurdly excited to try, I feel like so many people have tried this and rave about it. One of my favorite beauty gurus, Amy Ordman, has been trying it. It's the Aztec Secret Indian Healing Clay. It is 100% natural calcium bentonite clay, and it's just supposed to be such a deep, pore cleaning. I have such large pores, like right on the sides of my nose and in my chin, like the entire T-zone. They're just gross, they're big, and then they fill with blackheads. So I've been dying to try this. I really hope it works for me. So let's go ahead and pass it over to future Cami, where she is trying out both of these products right now. First thing I'm noticing and loving about this product is not only does it come with a little spoon, but it also sits in the lid easily. A lot of my other products either don't come with one at all, which is gross, or if it does come with one, there's nowhere to put it. It just sits on top of the container and gets dusty and gross and weird. So I'm just gonna take this in my hands and I'm massaging it into my skin. My skin is dry. I don't have any water on it at all. I haven't pre-removed my makeup because I really wanna see how this does at breaking down that makeup as well. Now I'm just taking a really warm washcloth and removing any of the product. That worked amazingly. I'm not having any eye sensitivity. It removed all of my makeup really, really well and my skin feels moisturized. It doesn't feel like it stripped it. You never want your cleansers to make your skin feel like it depleted it of all of its natural oils. Now for the mask. I am so excited. I already have this little mask bowl and spoon, and I also have a brush, so I'm gonna be using that. I'm just gonna take about a teaspoon of the mask and mix it with a teaspoon of raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar. And then I'm just mixing that up until it's a nice paste consistency. Alrighty, I'm gonna go let this sit on for about 15 minutes and then I will check back in with you guys. Okay, this is tight. <laughs> So I'm not gonna talk, I'm just gonna wash it up. So I'm definitely a little bit red, which I fully expected. Almost all of the reviews said for up to 30 minutes, your skin will be a little bit red. But my skin feels really nice. It feels really interesting. I'm excited to see what it does long-term for my skin. It almost feels chalky in a way, like it left a residue behind that sunk into my skin. I know that sounds like a negative, but it actually feels really nice. I feel like it's fully filling in all of my pores, so nothing is getting into it. No junk, no dirt, or any of that. I'm gonna throw in some moisturizer and see what this does. I think to give you guys a proper review, I'm gonna need to use it for a few weeks. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, go ahead and comment below and I'll update you guys in a future video or on Instagram. Thank you, future Cami. I really hope that those worked out nicely for you. 
<laughs> Let's move on to some of the other products. I am a sucker for makeup wipes. I just like the ease of having them. I also love them for travel, whether I'm on a plane or at a hotel. Anytime I don't really feel like fully washing my face. But I've mentioned before, I have relatively sensitive skin. I don't necessarily get pimples easily. But I get really red and just dry spots. And makeup wipes often, oftentimes irritate my skin. So I've been really excited to try these. They're from the brand Yes2. They're the Miracle Oil Brighten and Conditioning Argon Oil oil two-in-one cleansing moisturizing facial wipes. I might just take off half of my face so we can test stuff on it. I definitely am not feeling irritated at all. It's for sure taking off my makeup. I really like how that feels on my skin. I don't feel irritated at all. My skin feels like it was moisturized already, so that's really great. Those are wonderful. I don't think they're the most powerful when it comes to removing makeup itself, but as just like a first step in cleansing or if you're just feeling a little bit lazy, I think they're great on the skin. All right. Next up is another product from the Yes2 brand. It's their cucumber line, which is soothing and calming, which is really good for my red skin. Surprisingly, did not get red at all from those wipes. I have uneven skin tone, and that's all that's really showing. I'm not really red, which is huge for me. And this is a roller ball application. That is so hard to say, roller ball. So I meant to squeeze until some product, oh, the product comes out the sides a little bit, and then I just roll this over my face. The ball is actually really cooling and I love using like a jade roller or something around my eye to depuff. I feel like this would be really good for that. I think I may have put a little bit too much on. I was just really liking the cooling sensation so much. That feels really nice. I love a moisturizer that I can feel it kind of plumping up my skin and I can tell it's still there. I don't like when it just disappears as soon as I put it on, but I hate when it leaves like a film or a really sticky feeling. Definite, definite yes for me on this one. I bought a primer from e.l.f. I am such a big, big e.l.f. fan. I think when it first came out or when I first started seeing it, I really was sleeping on it. I was like, there's no way that this affordable of a brand is gonna have any great products. I don't know if I've ever really been let down by an e.l.f. product. I can't think of one yet. I also picked up some brushes, so I'll show you guys that as well in a minute. They have a ton of different primers, so I would definitely look for one that suits your skin. I got the Hydrating Face Primer. Like I mentioned, I have big pores, but I never enjoy pore filling primers. This is a really runny consistency. Pretty much water. Oh, it doesn't feel watery. Whoa, this is interesting. <laughs> I don't know what primer to compare this to. If you have oily skin, this is not the primer for you. Obviously, it's a hydrating primer. Of course, it's not for you. It feels pretty oily, not a thick, dense oily. Definitely feels like it's going to sink into the skin. I don't want to apply makeup on this immediately. I think that would be an extreme mistake because it would just slip around. So I'm going to let this sink into the face for just a second. I could probably have done with picking up the, can you guys see Frank right here? He is just like, right, his big old head is just right here like, mom, I want some primer. Hi buddy, oh, do you want makeup too? Do you want some makeup too, cutie? I love you. I think I personally with my skin type could benefit from using a hydrating primer all over and then more of a pore filling primer in my problem areas. They have so many different types of primers though. They really have one for every skin type. So if you try the other ones, let me know how you like them. I did not pick up a foundation because I just don't need one at the moment. But Cara grabbed one from Wet n Wild. It's a photo focus foundation in classic beige. I don't think this is gonna be my color. I actually don't think this is Cara's color. I probably should have helped her color match a little better. I'm gonna give it a try anyways, just so I can let you guys know about the consistency, the finish, all of that. The applicator is just a little stick applicator. So I'm gonna brush that onto my sponge. Yeah. This foundation, well, that might work for me. I'm actually really, really liking this foundation. The tone, I don't hate. You can kind of see where it's not fully matching my neck. I think I can blend it out enough. The hydrating primer really helped to blend that out nicely because I can get a bit blotchy just because of my uneven skin texture. Okay, my dog ran into the camera, so sorry if we're at a slightly different angle, but it's time for our first dupe, which I also believe 
is maybe the greatest dupe I've ever discovered in my entire life. I used to use the Benefits Precisely My Brow Eyebrow Pencil, which retails at $24. And I now started using the e.l.f. It's called the Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. I get it in neutral brown and it's $3. I barely have to touch and it gets so much pigment on. It stays put, but while you're doing it, you can so easily brush the product to kind of blend it out in the eyebrow. I don't want to have these like stick intense brows. I want it to be light and fluffy and smooth. This brow pencil has saved my life and my wallet because it's so affordable, but also so, so, so fantastic. Moving on to another tried and true product that I love. It's the NYX HD Studio Photogenic Concealer. I just really love the consistency and the texture. I don't like to get too cakey under the eyes. I just like to kind of slightly brighten up that area. I think it's really easily buildable if you are having a little bit of darker areas and it's just such a nice, light, wearable concealer. I don't notice shrieking or any funky marks throughout the day. It's really, really great. Moving on to contour, I have another dupe-esque product. I, for a very long time, was only contouring with powders, which I think was a very silly thing for my skin type. I have realized it's so much better and easier for me if I first do all of my liquids and contour with a cream first, blend that in, set, and then I can powder on top. So for the past few weeks, I've been trying this Wet n Wild Dull Ended Contour Stick. I love this stick so much because it is so narrow. So for its dupe-esque situation. I have the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Stick and they're both really, really similar textures and tones. I have a problem with how big this is because I like to get where you can see like right where my natural cheekbone is right here. I have to just use the edge to do this. I can't flatten it on or it takes up too much space and darkens too much of my cheek and then you muddy it up and it kind of ruins the separation of like light on top of the cheekbone darker in the nook of it so having this little guy I can just really carve out exactly where I wanted to go follow the chin go up in the hairline a bit as well and I'm someone who hates contouring my nose I have a wonky nose for it it doesn't typically work but this little guy has been so helpful I just do right under my nose like that and then just a little bit right up the side it's hard to contour half your nose so I'm just gonna blend this out it blends out so nicely I feel like another issue I have a lot of times with a cream contour is it either won't move and then I just feel like I have a gulp gulp. I just have like a big thing of the contour color and it just sits there. Or you have the opposite problem where it just disappears as soon as you go to blend this out. Where this I feel like does neither. It blends in so nicely but it's very clearly there. Okay I didn't buy any new fun setting powders today so I'm gonna go set my makeup really quickly and I'll be right back. Now that we are all set I'm gonna move on to my powders. You never want to do cream and then powder and then cream and then powder. Do all your creams first and then go on to your powders. Because once you set those creams, they're much more difficult to blend out. Now I'm just gonna warm up the face and go over those contoured areas with some bronzer. I'm using the Bron Booster by Physicians Formula. This one I use every day, so it's looking a little grimy. I probably should have picked up a new one for this. I'm just gonna go over the cheekbone, go along the jawline and down the neck a little bit to keep that blended and then just right in the hairline. This is just gonna warm up the face and help set that contour as well. On to blush. I also picked up a blush brush from e.l.f. I really like their brushes. I think they're so sleek having the matte handle and then the top of the handle is glossy. They look so great. And I'm trying a new product I've never tried or doing it right here together. It is the Ombre Blush, and I got it in Soft Flush. Ooh, okay, Ombre. Yes, I see you, girl. I never do like pinky blushes. I always do kind of darker bronzy blushes. For a while, I actually hated blush, and I thought it was the dumbest step of makeup, and it was so unnecessary and just made you look like a clown. And then I started using blush and was like, Oh, that makes me look fantastic. Why am I not using blush? And I like to kind of just work in circular motions right on top of where that bronzer is, not going like all the way up into my hairline, just on the apples of my cheek and then a little bit back. 
and that's just so pretty it just warms up your face i think it looks so natural nice you can go over your nose a little i'm actually gonna do my already makeup side oh i love that tone that's so sorry guys my card is full anyways where were we i also was so afraid to use blush for the longest time because as I mentioned, I already get such red blotchy skin that I was afraid if I added blush, it would just look like those red breakouts. I really didn't think this haul was gonna turn into a full face of makeup. I didn't think I got enough to do it, but I pretty much did. I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlighter real quick. I'm gonna do something terrible and use the blush brush to do my highlighter because I don't wanna get up and grab a different brush. I'm using the e.l.f. Cosmetics Blue Lagoon. I normally stick to pretty warm champagne-y highlighters, but this one, it's just so nice and pretty. I don't mind that it's a little bit iridescent. It's so blinding and pretty. It actually reminds me a lot of my Fenty Beauty highlighter. I didn't think I knew where all of my other highlighters were that are definitely more typically my type of highlighter. It clicked in my head. I conmarried my entire bathroom, which is great because everything has its place, but I forgot where my highlighters were. And I just remembered it clicked and this is my favorite, favorite, favorite elf highlighter. So I just want to show you guys it really quickly. It's a shimmer highlighting powder and it's just such a nice like goldy, warm, subtle look. So if you want something that just is a natural kind of warmth and looks like you were in the sun, go for this one. If you want something a little bit more blinding, definitely go for either the Blue Lagoon or the Siren's Call, which I've definitely shown you guys before. It is another really blinding one. I'm just gonna layer these up. I know that's silly, but I just wanna show you guys. This is just as blinding as the Blue Lagoon, but it has more of an orangey tone. So it's really good if you have a warmer complexion and don't want your highlighter to be too harsh. Now that I have 12 layers of highlight on, Let's move on. Another new product I'm trying is the e.l.f. Length and Volume Black Mascara. I truly believe that mascara is pretty much all in the wand. You just need to find a wand that works for what you are trying to achieve. If you just want length, get something that has really separated bristles. They can be shorter, they can be a little bit harder and spikier. If you want volume, get something that looks like a dense hairbrush almost. This is definitely the kind of bristles I prefer. It has the more like dense hairbrush type bristles to give you a lot of volume. But they also are a bit spread out, so it looks like it will be good for length. What I'm really noticing about this that I'm liking is how small it is. Sometimes when they are dense like this, it's a really big brush and it's so hard to get in there. And I'm really liking this formula. It's not very clumpy. It's super, super smooth. Even the product that I'm seeing around the top of the container, it's not getting chunky, which I don't like a lot of things that have like fibers in it. I just never feel like it looks natural or nice. Yeah, I think they really, really killed it with that brush. So for lip, I got the NYX Slip Tees, and it is in the color Low Key. It says it's a full color lip oil, which I'm not really sure what that means. I'm really intrigued to see what this consistency is gonna be like. Oh, I love this applicator brush. I love when they're like long and skinnier for the lips. I'm not gonna put a lip liner on because I don't have one from this line, and I really wanna know exactly what this feels like on the lips, so I don't want anything in the way. I'm really, really liking this formula so far. I wanna see how it dries on the lip because that is what's key to me, really. It definitely feels very satiny. Doesn't feel great on my teeth. It feels kind of moussey in a way. It's really light, really airy, completely full coverage right away. As you saw, it took one swipe and it was there. So I'm really liking how that's drying. It feels still very smooth and satiny. It doesn't feel like it's cracking or settling into my lips at all. I hope you guys had fun trying out some new products with me and hearing about some of my tried and true favorites from CVS. I will be sure to link all of the products in my description box below so you can check them out. Don't forget to head over to CVS.com so you can become a beauty club member like me, gain first access to the epic beauty event and all the other amazing perks that come along with it. I love you guys so much. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you next week. Bye.